for joining us for Hope Today. And if you're in need of a spiritual pick-me-up, you know you're right in the right place for the next 30 minutes. We love to bring you hope and inspiration and encouragement. Tom, Amanda, and I, we're all back together again. And Amanda, we have an incredible guest coming up. We sure do. Give it to God and go to bed. We're talking about rest today, but I mean really rest. And she's going to talk about a product that she has. You are not going to want to miss this. We're all going to be sleeping much better. we will be sleep on the set here. It's going to be That's so right. great. <laughs> and somebody uh, had a birthday actually this, this weekend, didn't, didn't she? Turn 25, she right? Did. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy but birthday to you, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you so much. We had a great time. And my daughter came all the way from Massachusetts to surprise me. And I was surprised. Two tears. It was just a wonderful time. And family's the best. Did she show up at the restaurant, you said? So she drove from Massachusetts to they the did restaurant. A nine hour drive oh, just my made my mom heart just melt. So I love her so much. And my kids and Caleb came back to visit from YWAM. And anyhow, it was a great day. Oh, that's good. Good. Well, happy birthday. Thank well, you. guys, we have a new segment called Stump the Host. <laughs> So you guys have to hold up the host. I was 0 for 3 last week, okay? So you guys got to hold up the host. Uh, oh boy. Uh, Are we allowed to use our Bibles? No, no, okay. this is not an open book test. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. How many years did Jacob spend as a servant in order to marry Rachel? 12 years. Is that your final? That is, is that, my final answer. That's your final answer? Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it was 12 or 7 plus oh, 14. 14. Oh, I knew it was, I was oh, close. Oh, my goodness. What's the other sound effect, Rick? Dang There's it. another sound effect. No, not that one. Come on, what's the other one? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> there we go. I was close. No. I knew it was like 12. Yeah, I can't add. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, 14. Remember, he, he, said, he agreed seven. seven. And then Another his, uh, yeah, then the, the, his you sneaky father-in-law yeah. snuck Leah in there. Yeah. It's it. interesting. Uh, and he actually ended up working six more years for the guy afterwards. So he like worked 20 years there. But anyway, well, the host will, uh, will get it together here pretty soon. Uh, but good, good guess. Uh, Matthew 6, 33 and 34 is our scripture today. This is one I'm sure you've all heard. It's a great passage here. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Any thoughts on that scripture? Amen. Stress less. Just, you know, we're not called to carry the care of this world. We're not to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. I find it interesting, you know, in a teen challenge course that we've been studying at our restoration house, it actually, um, what they found in all their studies is until you meet the, the needs first, then a person can receive spiritually. So it's really important that we hit those needs, but the full circle of it is once spiritually you've comprehended and understand there's a God that loves you and you receive him, you no longer worry about those earthly things. So That's it's, so good. yeah. yeah. But God desires to care for everything, Sidney. He really does. And I think there's certain seasons where like there's times where you're like, oh God, are you gonna do it? Oh God, like what's happening? But I think even in the midst of it, I know like we're going into Thanksgiving time in November. I just think gratitude every day of just taking that moment and be like, you know what? Meditate and think on the things of God has already done, how he's meeting your daily needs. And maybe that big need hasn't been met yet. But even right now, I even think there's a song that Maverick City um, Music has is called Miracles, and you're doing little miracles every day. And I think sometimes we lose track, especially in our day and age and just the way our culture is is that we're so caught up in the big grandiose things that we miss on the small little moments how he's taking care of our needs or how he's like not letting you get into that car accident you know just like certain things I just try to be mindful of God you're working all things together for our good Amen. yeah I think that you know if we if we learn to take care of the things that God is concerned about he takes care of the things we're concerned about now I, I like what you shared Amanda certainly people need their basic needs met food and shelter and and, and care and those kind of things. But honestly, most of us have those things. What we, what we end up doing is we worry and we worry and we worry about a lot of other things. Seek first his kingdom 
and That's let right. him add those things to, you, things to you. Now, what does seek first his kingdom mean? Well, it can mean a lot of different things. It can mean ministry. It can just mean putting him first is the main thing. So we can all do that. So be sure you do that. And if you need any prayer today, if you need help in putting him first, then give us a call at 888-665-4483. Amanda. Amen. Well, what if I told you that in just 10 days, you can learn how to stress less, sleep better and dream more. I'm pretty sure most of us would sign up for that in a heartbeat. Our next guest is both a naturopathic doctor and author. And in her new book, Give It to God and Go to Bed, Laura Harris Smith shares how you can increase your prayer life, gain better sleep and how you can even interpret God given prophetic dreams. Laura, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you, Amanda. I'm so glad to be back with you guys. Amen. Well, Laura, I'm so interested in your story itself and you know how this book even came about, but could you give us a little bit of your background? Yeah. Well, it came about because of a sleep defiance. Um, <laughs> I used to just, well, I love work. I love what I do. And so I used to get about four or five hours sleep a night and it just about cost me my life. I did this for decades. I have six children and now 12 grandchildren, big king size life on top of everything else that I do. And yeah, I just basically wound up in stage three adrenal exhaustion. Stage four is when all your organs shut down. I didn't even know I had it until that diagnosis. And uh, so I had to make changes or die, I was told. Um, and I was told if I survived it all, it would take 18 to 24 months to turn it around. And that in six months, God did in six months what it, you know, it, it said, they said it would take almost two years, but I had to fully cooperate with him. And, you know, I've experienced miracles in my life before, but there are times when God requires us to just cooperate with him. And I had also, before any of this had even happened, had a long neurological history of seizures since I was 13 years old. So my body had been through so much and I was not doing it right, uh, you know, by not sleeping. And I did, I made the, the necessary changes that I needed to. And yet, even though I got all of my adrenal issues, you know, right and felt so good afterwards, I still had this lingering neurological problem. I'd had over 80 convulsions uh, over the course of my life and they were very violent. Um, and I used to not believe that, you know, in healing, I, I believed God could do it. I didn't really know that he would do it. So once this began to happen to me and really escalate, I, I threw myself into the word of God. I had to find out what it said about it. And I, it's interesting because my health got worse. It got worse as I just told you. So what I did was I began to just go back to the word of God again. And he showed me in scripture one day where there are not nine, you know, there's not eight gifts of the Holy Spirit. There's nine. One is healing and one is miracles. And he said, Laura, they're very different things. I want you to research what that is. And so miracles, the Greek word, is just an instant, you know, act that it establishes the, the preaching of the word. Miracles break out. Everybody's, you know, saved. But healing is a very, it's a process word. Every Greek word for it is a process word. Remedy, treatment, therapy. One of the Greek words is therapeo, where we get therapy. And so to some, he's given the workings of miracles, some the gift of healing. I realized right then I had prayed for a miracle, but unfortunately I was getting a healing. It was going to be a process. And he began to just give me inventions and, and uh, cures, remedies through essential oils. And during this time, I had decided to go back to school, become a nutritionist, and eventually now a naturopathic doctor. So my journey and into the naturopathic world and into creating now patented products, uh, it came under duress. It was almost like, you know, when your curse becomes your crusade and you just see God Make lemonade. I don't know how else. To, that's how my mom would say it. Um, and he just takes what the enemy intends for evil and turns it for good. I'm still here. <laughs> that's right. With with a purpose, that is for sure. Well, as I was navigating through your book, you have in chapter two, the treasures inside your bedroom. But talk to us about 
how we can create that space for us, you know, that we actually will rest. What does that look like? What does your bedroom look like? Well, oh, my bedroom? Okay. Well, what I first let me just say that if you do not have a bedroom that you feel comfortable in, you're not going to rest. So it sounds so simple, but you need to create a sanctuary in your bedroom. You know, I used to be a shopping channel TV host and I loved the bedding shows because I got to just um, sit in the middle of a big fluffy bed and you didn't sell bedroom sets based on decor and color. You really didn't. You sold it based on telling people, look, you spend a third of your life in this room and you need to be able to feel at home in there. So I sent the whole book and give it to God and go to bed. It all takes place in your bedroom. And as you said, uh, that chapter is the treasures in your bedroom. There are so many other chapters like the monsters in your closet, the junk under your bed. But what I do is I try to start with encouraging you to make your bedroom that sanctuary. Get all of the clutter out of your bedroom. Um, take, you know, all the framed pictures in your bedroom should be people that you like, <laughs> that love you. Um, and then just other things, practical things in the book, like reposition your bed, hang the curtains higher to make the room feel bigger, put your bed on risers so you can have more storage. I have all of these just practical tips in there to get you to like your bedroom again. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did in my sleep. <laughs> Laura, let me, let me ask you about uh, sleep and what it says about God. I've, all, I've said for years that God could have given us a planet with two suns so that we could stay up all 24. He could have made us so that we didn't have to stop and eat or sleep or anything, but he didn't make us that way. He made us to need those down times and especially sleep. To you, what, what, is, what does that say about God? Well, we serve a, a God who took a day off, took a, a day of rest after he created everything that we needed. And I love that about our God. And what's so miraculous, Tom, is that he actually created in our bodies the ability when we sleep, and this started when we were children, he releases something into our body called HGH. It's a human growth hormone. It's what makes you grow. You know, my parents, they, I used to hear them say, oh, well, you, you're growing so fast, I could just watch you grow. You know, oh, we grow when we sleep. And so once you get full grown, you're like, why aren't we 15 feet tall? Because it's still coursing through your veins when you sleep at night. Now we don't grow, we heal. It's so miraculous. So if you don't sleep, your health will go south, you know, and you have to, like I said, I learned that if I don't go to sleep, my organs will go to sleep for me. And that's basically what happens. So I am passionate about helping people get to sleep. I believe God, as you said, he, he created the moon and the stars, not as an afterthought, but as a time when it's a, it's really a sacred time for us to heal, but also to hear from him through prophetic dreams. And speaking about dreams, you, you know, you talked about the different phases and I don't know if you could quickly go through those, but it amazed me at what our bodies do every night when we lay down and then with the dreams, go into what wake dreams are and their importance. Sure. Well, you downshift several times on your way to deep sleep. You go through N1, the sleep stages N2, N3. Uh, there's deep sleep. There's also dream sleep. You have to go into this deep sleep. Otherwise, you would reenact your dreams and you'd be dangerous to everybody around you. Sometimes that happens where you're still kind of on the cusp and you have a crazy dream that's like, you know, you, you start reenacting in the bed. And uh, and so those kinds of things, that's, you know, where a lot of your sleep walking happens and, and so forth. But those two, those are a downshifting process that puts us into that rapid eye movement sleep. And yeah, I know for a fact, if you, people tell me all the time, I don't dream. And I say, look, science proves you are dreaming 16 to 36 times each night. So the issue becomes dream recall, proper nutrition for dream recall. I've extensively studied this. I'm tired of people telling me they don't dream and that they can't, you know, they don't understand this. What will, why do some people dream and I don't? Why would God be speaking to some people and not me? It's not a matter of he's not. It's a matter of dream recall. So what I do is I teach about the different types of dreams that we see in scripture and that also that I've seen in my life. And the waking dreams are the ones that, well, you can't forget them because they're the last thing 
that you remembered before you know you woke up and they often are just prayer assignments for me they're immediate something he's showing me something that's going to happen sometimes it's a a warning waking dream sometimes it's an encouraging waking dream and you just see where in scripture like that warning dream where, where god told joseph take mary and the child get out of the country you know um they're after his life or or encouraging dreams you see some like with gideon gideon didn't have the dream about the barley loaf tumbling into the camp he overheard someone else's dream and it encouraged him they were going to win i don't even know if i have enough faith for that one that a loaf of bread <laughs> represents you're going to win in battle but you see the holy spirit within you is the best interpreter and so i again i am you can't sleep if you can't sleep you can't dream sleep is the mattress of dreams so that's my goal in helping get people to sleep <laughs> well this is so good laura and uh, i am so thankful you sent some of your quiet brain oil along so while we sniff on our our quiet brain we're going to go to break but when we come back we're going to talk about this so don't go anywhere Life and death are in the power of the tongue. God has given his children the mandate to declare what he speaks. It's time for believers to counter the attacks of the enemy with God's word of truth. For your best gift to the ministry of Cornerstone Television, Declarations for Breakthrough by Jane Hammond can be yours. Plus, when you make your gift an automatic monthly gift through Easy Pledge, you'll also receive our new Miracle of Creation DVD. When you start with the Bible as the history book of the universe, you're ready to discover creation science. Join host Dr. Ray Heipel as he examines the evidence through the lenses of eight very qualified people in many areas of science. Discover how science confirms creation. These two incredible gifts will be yours when you put your best gift on Easy Pledge. Request both gifts with your automatic donation and we'll send them to you right away. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. Well, this is just awesome. I'm telling you, I, I think that it has not tranquilized us, but anyhow, it has definitely I think it, I relaxed. Think it has. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna to shut go down ahead. for the rest of the program. There That's we all go. Right. <laughs> uh, yes. It's so important to get rest, Tom. <laughs> well, Laura, it works. This is phenomenal product, but tell us, a little bit about your research and what is in this blend that really helps just, I feel an instant like calming within my body. God is so good. He made everything we need on the third day of creation to help restore us and mend us and prevent illness from ever coming. So what I did, as I said, I was having these awful seizures and I knew that it was basically like an electrical storm in my brain. I needed to quiet my brain. And so I began studying oils that would do this. Now, let me just say for the essential oil skeptics out there, I was one of them. I never used essential oils, but someone told me they used this one single oil and it used to really, you know, calm them down. And I thought, okay, I'll try it. Well, it didn't do anything for my brain. I mean, not, not to that extent. But then I began researching why was that, that oil, just not all essential oils, that particular oil having the effect on that person. And I found out there's something in it, in that particular oil called <clears throat> sesquiterpenoids. Now sesquiterpenoids are not found in all oils, but they are the ones that cross the blood brain barrier. And I thought, what if I were able to find several of those kind of oils, make a blend out of it and make a, a oil that would literally calm my brain. So I did that, I researched and I, I bought the eight oils, they were very costly, it took me a while actually, and I got them all you know, there and I would take them out of the box, take a picture, you know, and put them back in the box. I didn't know what to do with them. And one night I just said, Lord, I'm gonna put on some worship music and I'm gonna ask you for the recipe. I can't even bake a cake with a recipe, so you've got to help me with this. And he did, guys, he gave me this recipe and five drops here, 20 drops there, 30 drops there. And at, by the end of it, I was weeping and I took the bottle. I ran out to my husband. He thought something had happened to one of the children. I was really weeping that hard. And I said, we have to pray because God has told me this is an, it's an anointing oil. And we have to ask that he would transform it into that. And he told me immediately, I felt like he said, do a case study 
get some testimonies coming in, did that. My son-in-law, who had had two deployments to Iraq and was waking up in the middle of the night, packing his gun, had PTSD so badly, he took one dose and he called me and he said, Madre, what is this stuff? It has turned the PTSD off. I didn't even know how bad it had gotten. Yeah. He said, you have to protect it. So we got it trademarked. And then knowing that my background is television, um, which I know we haven't established that yet, but I knew that Jehovah Sneaky was going to, it was going to wind up on TV. And so I knew I had to get it protected. And I went through the patenting process. Mm -hmm. Only 5% of natural products even get patented. Uh, and I couldn't afford a $20,000 patent attorney, but the Lord somehow helped me write a patent and we got quiet brain patented. And now, I mean, before I knew it, I'd done $30,000 from my kitchen table. This last year we passed our $1 million mark. People all around the globe are telling me that quiet brain is helping calm their brains. So migraine, tremors, seizures, our number two testimonies are insomnia and anxiety. This is a powerful product that God has literally breathed through you. And I can't just thank you enough for your obedience to take the time to listen to God in order to help so many more people. But you know, I was thinking about um, the monsters in the closet, like other things. So we have this as a product, but there are things that we deal with. One of them that you mentioned in your book you know, when someone says something negative or we have that negative experience and at nighttime it wants to keep replaying over in our heads. Talk right. to us about some of those things that we can do to help ourselves really give our rest to God. I'm glad that you brought this up because I just mentioned a, a product for your body. But if you do not engage your mind and your spirit in this process of trying to get to sleep, you will never find full rest. You'll never be whole because we're made in the image of a triune God. And so we see the Trinity heart at work in the Garden of Eden. Let us make man in our image. So if you try to segregate those three parts of yourself, you won't be able to to get to sleep. You'll be able to solve any problem. So what I did was in that particular chapter, the monsters in your closet, I deal with the spiritual forces that are really monitoring your life. People don't like to think about that just because you don't like to think about spiritual warfare doesn't mean it's going to go away. So I talk about the things that, that lurk, uh, there, that chapter and the junk under your bed we talk about unforgiveness and fear, our reactions to people, our responses, the things that we're so familiar with, the behaviors we're so familiar with that we get stuck uh, there. And then we lay in bed at night and we rehearse and rehash these things in our mind that we could have said better, that we, you know, we, we just build up our cases against people. And it, it continues to baffle me how people don't link that with their insomnia or they get to sleep but they don't stay asleep. So I, through my products, through the prayers and give it to God and go to bed, and through just the psychological journey that I take you on there in your mind as well to deal with the fears in your heart concerning your life and your stresses and your worries, I try to body, mind, and spirit minister to every part of you so that your sleep can be sweet. Amen. Well, you did such a great job on your book, Laura. There's ABCs, you know, to ZZZ. <laughs> and we just appreciate that you bring these topics to the table because rest ultimately must be very important to God. So thank you so much for your time today and just pouring into all of us. We have just a few moments left. Would you just pray over us, Laura? Yes. Yeah. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that Psalm 127 too says you give your beloved sleep. There's so many of us, we're having to fight for that. You give us so many things in scripture, but we have to fight for those. And I pray, Father, that people would, they would fight for the right to sleep well, to heal at night, to also hear your voice through these prophetic dreams, that they wouldn't do like the book of Job says, where they just... They don't perceive it when you give a dream or a vision, but that, like Song of Solomon says, they sleep, but their heart is awake, listening to the voice of their beloved. And I pray all of this in the name above all names, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, Laura. 
Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Oh, I feel just so at rest even hearing her talk. I know, I feel I'm refreshed. Uh, <laughs> no, it, honestly, it, it is so important. Again, we, are, we have a God who created rest. He rested himself, he commanded rest, he had festivals, he had times and seasons. He didn't mean for us to run 24 seven. You know, guys, I have this little saying too. He didn't, he put us in the garden of Eden. He didn't put us in the factory of Eden. Do you ever think That's about right. that? He didn't put us in a factory to be productive, constantly productive. Yes, there was work to do, but there was downtime as well. You know, just even talking in this conversation of rest and of sleep, and I know there's been a lot of us like disturbances of sleep or you're woken up in the middle of the night or whatever you're going through, but I just want to encourage you today is that, you know, maybe in the middle of the night, sometimes God will wake you up with a dream. Write it down. Write down your dreams. Hear what God is speaking. And something that I've done is, I haven't done it recently because sometimes I'm like, oh, it's too early, Jesus. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> but I was just like writing it down or just like um, seeing what time it is and seeing if like if the Holy Spirit will speak if it's a certain scripture or just something. Thing, just trying to understand, God, what are you speaking? What are you saying? And I'll even ask the Holy Spirit, what do you mean in the midst of this? But God wants to give us rest, but he wants to speak to us, Amanda, in the midst of it as well. That's right. And in those wake dreams, I've found moments where God has given instruction. So you can't literally solve your problems in your sleep, but he can give you instructions that upon you waking up, if you'll put action, put legs on those instructions, he'll bring resolve. So I encourage you to have that moment with the Lord and rest in him today as we just are together. You know, the other thing about dreams is I don't want one that remembers my dreams a lot. And, uh, and I have rarely ever gotten direction from the Lord from them. But the other part of the dream is your body is kind of discharging the cares and the, and the things of the day. See, God created us this way. He created us to have those times where our body resets, where our mind is able to discharge the things. You know, our mind takes in so much every day and it gives, has this time for it to empty itself out and to bring that rest to our minds. God wants that for you. Be sure, however you do it, be sure you get that rest. We are so grateful that you joined us today because we just had a really great conversation about rest. And you know, I love what Laura said, that scripture that God loves to give his beloved rest and he wants to give you that rest while you're sleeping and even at home. And we just encourage you today, just invite the Holy Spirit into your home, into your space so you can experience him like never before today. Well, we're so grateful that you joined us for this very special hope today. And we know that as you seek his face, as you press into his presence, that he's gonna shower his love, his grace, upon you today. Have a good one. On tomorrow's Hope Today, finding hope in Jesus. Christian singer-songwriter Natasha Owens encourages you to be a light and stand for the truth, no matter what season you're in. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.